In South Africa today, there was a prayer service for Nelson Mandela, who remains in hospital with a lung infection. An historic church in Soweto held this service for the 94-year-old. Doctors say the anti-apartheid icon is doing well and responding to treatment. However, they can't say if he will be released from the hospital in time for Christmas. Of course, Mandela is best known for his struggle to end apartheid in South Africa. His party, the African National Congress, has dominated the political scene ever since the end of white rule. Earlier this month, the party gave the current president, Jacob Zuma, another term in office. But as Sean Mallon tells us, for millions of South Africans, hopes for a better life have still not been met. Comrade Jacob Zuma received 2,983 votes. Jacob Zuma's presidency has been rocky at times, but his party still wants him to lead, giving him a massive majority over a potential challenger. That therefore, we have something to contribute to the democratic life of this country, to this democratic republic of South Africa. Zuma's African National Congress led the fight against apartheid and has run South Africa ever since the elections in 1994, the first in which all races could vote. But the promises of true equality have fallen short. <laughs> Johannesburg's Alexandra Township is where Nelson Mandela lived as a young man. Majority rule has brought no relief from poverty. This man continues to live in a one-room shack infested with rats. Even me, myself, they bite me when I was sleeping here. Yeah? The profusion of rats promotes a sad form of entrepreneurship. Residents who can trap 60 qualify for a cell phone from a charity. This man got 93 in just one day. So he's getting the third phone for his hard work. In the countryside, anger seethes. Here, farm workers protest over low wages. Many of them make less than $7 a day. They use it as like a slaver, and then, and then they gain about us, and then we don't gain nothing. 18 years after the fall of apartheid, many of them still live in shacks. By comparison, the vast vineyards of the Western Cape are still mainly in the hands of white farmers. Some now are targeted, their fields and buildings torched by striking workers. This farmer would only appear on camera if his face was disguised. As I'm standing here, I'm scared to talk to you because when it comes on the TV, they will come and, and victimize me. As a result, many are now putting up barbed wire fences, barricading themselves in for protection. They say they're being unjustly blamed for the failures of the ANC government. South Africa, under black majority rule, remains among the most prosperous nations on the continent. But for many, getting the vote for all has not brought a better life. Sean